All right, gang, so this will take a deep dive, kind of, into the similarities and differences between a presidential and a parliamentary democracy. Now, in the United States, our system, for what we're uh, concerned with, would be considered a presidential democracy. Um, and most presidential democracies, in terms of how they select a leader and in terms of, you know, the role of the citizens and the role of the voters, it, it's pretty similar to this. Now, obviously, our system has some quirks with the Electoral College, but let's dive in. So down here we have our voters, right? Um, and when voters go to vote in a presidential system, they've got kind of two different choices they make. Um, they will vote for uh, members of their legislature. Uh, so in the United States, that would be like our senators in the Senate and our Congress people in the House of Representatives. Um, and the legislative branch, that's the group that makes the laws. Um, and as we see here, it is directly elected by the people. Um, and we've got a couple of different political parties here. We've got our blues, our orange, our reds, and our greens. Um, just to kind of distinguish and show that when the voters go and vote, um, they can select some different people and they send them to the legislature in a presidential system. They also make a separate additional vote for their executive or their president. That is the person who enforces the laws. That's typically your head of government, uh, sometimes also your head of state and the person who really runs the country. So two choices. You vote for your legislative branch and your executive branch. You vote for your lawmakers uh, and your president. Now, that's a presidential system. In a parliamentary system, it's a little bit different. Um, you notice here in a parliamentary system, we still have our voters, we still have a legislature, and we still have an executive. However, the process in which they are selected is a little bit different. In a parliamentary system, typically the voters only vote for members of the legislature. They only vote for members of parliament. Um, and then it's parliament or the legislature itself who selects the leader who selects the executive uh, or uh, in this case the prime minister and so what we have here is we have our voters and they go and they make their choice and again we have multiple political parties we've got our blues we've got our reds we've got this little orange guy hanging out here um, and they make their choices for members of parliament and then these members of parliament they get together on the first day of parliament these ministers of parliament as they're often known these ministers of parliament more on that in a second um, and then we see here in our little fictitious parliament we have one two three four five Five of the blues, three of the reds, and one of the oranges. Or is that green? I'm not sure. Um, at any rate, uh, well, who do you suppose they're going to pick? Well, they're going to pick a blue. So they would pick one of their blue members. Boop. Let's just say it's this guy right here. And then that member would become the prime minister or the chief executive. Um, and they are still a member of parliament, but they're also someone who runs the country as well. And so in this way, in, in most parliamentary democracies, again, the voters don't go and directly pick their leader, unlike our presidential democracy where they choose member of parliament and an executive. In a parliamentary democracy, they just choose the legislature and then the legislature or the parliament, the ministers get together and select their prime minister amongst themselves. Now, let's look at this side by side to kind of break it down a little bit more. Here again, we have our presidential democracy on the left and then parliamentary on the right. So you can kind of get the side by side view as you look at both. Both of them have voters. Both of them, the voters vote for the legislature. It's just that in a presidential democracy, the voters make two choices. They also choose an executive or a president, but in a parliamentary, they just make one choice. And if we were to, let's see if we can zoom in a little bit down here. There we go. Um, and so just kind of a couple of notes about this presidential system. Uh, the executive and legislature are not combined. They are two separate branches. That's one of the um, really rad things that we have in the United States, this separation of powers, our legislative and our executive, and of course, our judicial branch. The executive is not always the same party as the legislature. So for example, in the United States, uh, our current president, President Trump, he is a Republican. The Senate has a Republican majority, but the House has a Democratic majority or a Democrat majority. Um, and so we've got different parties um, in control of different branches, this idea of checks and balances. And there's regularly held elections every four or five years, depending on the country that you're in. In the United States, it's every four years. And so in our fictitious election ballot, um, when we go to vote, we can vote for President Bob, Sue, or Cletus. And then we can also go and vote for our legislature, Francis, Jane, or Frank. Um, lots of different choices. Let's kick it on over to our parliamentary side of things. And again, over here, we still have our voters. They vote for parliament, but then the parliament itself selects a prime minister. And because parliament is selecting it, um, what we see here, let's get rid of that, uh, because parliament selects it, we see that the executive and legislative branch are combined, 
right? That would be like if we elected a Senate and then the Senate themselves picked one of the senators to become president. Um, obviously, almost guaranteed, the president in that case would come from the main or majority political party or the party that has the most votes. So too, is it the same in a parliamentary system, uh, which means that there's a lot of commonality. Oftentimes, almost always, the executive is going to come from the same party as the main party of parliament. So that idea of checks and balances, um, it's gone a little bit, but on the upside for our parliamentary system, um, it's more easy for the party in power to get their legislative agenda uh, or their policies put into place and to get them enacted. However, um, one of the downsides to this system is that elections are much more frequent in a parliamentary system. Yes, they might have them scheduled every five years, but it's also possible that you know two, three, four years in, all of a sudden parliament gets together and they say, you know what? Uh, we no longer have faith in our leader and they hold what is known as a no confidence vote. Um, and they say, we no longer have faith in our legislative or our executive leader rather, uh, and let's hold a new election. And they do. Um, it's not that it has to happen at regularly scheduled times. They can happen much more frequently. This typically happens in a parliamentary system when you have multiple political parties um, and when no one political party has the majority, right? Because it's very common that, for example, that maybe 40% of the political party is controlled by the blues and 35% is controlled by the reds and 25% is controlled by the greens. And so maybe the reds and the greens get together and that 35 and that 25, that 60% and they select a red to be the leader. But maybe after a while, the greens are unhappy with the red leader. And so the greens say, we want to hold a no confidence vote. And the blues are like, yes, we also want to hold a no confidence vote because we also don't like the red leader. And then they get rid of the red leader and they hold a new election. And then maybe with that new election, maybe now we have a blue leader. So it is definitely much more chaotic um, than what we are used to here in the United States. But if we were to look at our election ballot, then uh, we have our legislative branch uh, in a parliamentary system. And you've just got basically choices for your legislature, Francis, Jane, Frank, Edward, and Bethel. Uh, and then they will get together and they will choose their prime minister. Um, so there's that full side-by-side -side for you yet again. Um, and then here's just kind of the ballot side-by-side, -side, just again, to kind of give you this idea of two votes in a presidential system, one for legislative, one for executive versus one vote in a parliamentary system here on the right, uh, where it's probably just going to be one for the legislature. So there it is, just kind of a quick overview, um, just kind of a quick recap of some of the ins and outs and the differences of those two. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions. I hope you are doing well. And uh, yeah, I'll talk to you later. See ya.